Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad to join you here and that you're joining me here in our midweek refuel and prefuel. It's a little bit different tonight than it has been over recent months where we've been looking at what's coming next in our walk through the Bible. I will give you a little preview of that. But throughout the season of Lent, which we're in right now, we just passed through Ash Wednesday last week, and we came through the first Sunday of Lent this past weekend. Uh, we are now into a six-week preparation for Easter. Easter and the celebration of Jesus' resurrection that way. Lent has a lot of interesting features to it. Some people give things up. Some people take disciplines on. Other people make a point of reading through scripture. Other folks uh, will deny themselves various uh, pleasures that they normally have. Chocolate and coffee are pretty uh, common ones that I hear about that. Uh, but Lent is always aiming at the good news. It's something that we want to hold on to with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that Jesus Christ is our Savior, that he has bought us back from sin and death and the power of the devil, as we learn in Luther's small catechism. And that truth that Jesus has bought us back from sin and death and the power of the devil brings us up to what we are going to be talking about on these midweek refuels throughout the season of Lent, and then something called spiritual warfare. We'll come back to that in just a minute. I wanted to just for a moment kind of make this a uh, place in time and mark what's happened. Uh, here we are uh, almost in March. We're almost at a year from the time that we first closed down our in-person worship and how we, we retreated to our homes and ho hoped to flatten the curve uh, of the coronavirus infections. And, and it has been quite an adventure from the beginning of this time until now. Uh, we're going to be crossing the, the, the date that we last met together, March 15th, Ides of March it was, uh, not too long from now. Uh, it was in the midst of the season of Lent where we departed from one another. And I want to remind you that even though we've departed from one another, we are still together. It's harder to perceive. It's harder to maintain uh, there's a tremendous home court advantage that meeting together at church gives us. But when we don't have that together, we just need to be intentional about reaching out to one another, uh, intentional about remaining connected to one another. And so as part of the body of Christ that's located at St. Paul's, I want to encourage you as a congregation uh, to keep on reaching out to one another. As a pastor, I can do that, and I have been. I call folks as I have opportunity and necessity to do so. But I'd love it and I'd love to hear the stories that you guys have been reaching out to one another, that you've been interested in one another, catching up, praying for one another. That is one of the great things that Christ gave us in his defeat of the evil one. The evil one wants to separate us from one another. He wants to separate us from God. It is a spiritual act of warfare to say no to that and to resist that, uh, that work of the devil. Um, I don't know if, if you have the same feeling as I do, but I feel like it's been something of a long winter. Uh, it's been cold. We've had a bunch of snow on the ground since the middle of December. Uh, but today, uh, did you get outside today and breathe in some of that fresh air? Uh, just as my Audubon clock over my shoulder here chimed that it was Robin Redbreast o'clock, um, I was looking forward not only to coming to you in our midweek refuel, but I'm looking forward to spring. Uh, it, we may still have some winter coming along. I guess the groundhog was right that we would have six more weeks of winter. But spring is coming. Hope springs eternal. And that's actually one of the things that grounds us in our spiritual warfare. I wanted to encourage you to take a look at the Bible. This is from the book of 1 Peter. Uh, Peter, one of Jesus' apostles, uh, he was the one that would jump out of the boat and walk on water and then start to sink when he looked at the waves. He's the same one that uh, would spoke up and said, you are the Christ, you're the son of the living God. Uh, but then Jesus had to turn and say, get behind me, Satan, because you're not thinking about the things of, of men. He's an impulsive kind of guy, but he's always ready for battle. And Peter, you might remember, is the one who in the Garden of Gethsemane drew out his sword and cut off the ear of a servant of the high priest when Jesus was being arrested there in the Garden of Gethsemane. So you might think of Peter as somebody who is always equipped for battle and ready, maybe even spoiling, I don't know, for a fight. Well, you know, 
I'm a lover, not a fighter, uh, many people might say. But the truth of the matter is that in our life, ever since the fall, ever since Adam and Eve botched everything in that first week or second week that we had in our um, walk through the Bible, we have been born onto a battlefield. We've been born in a position of needing defense as well as a good offense against the assaults of the evil one. We don't pay a lot of attention to the devil. And in some ways, that's okay. So C.S. Lewis, the guy behind The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and the Narnia series, most famously, wrote a whole lot of other books and many, many lectures. But one of his most interesting books is something called The Screwtape Letters. And The Screwtape Letters is a, a, it's a delightful read. If you haven't read it, I'd love to read it along with you some point in time. But the screw tape letters, he starts out in the introduction saying that there are two equal and opposite errors that we can have with regards to devils. One is to pay them too much interest, and the other error is to pay them not enough interest. If we pay them too much interest, they have an undue sway on our lives, and we're always looking behind every corner for the influence of the devil. On the other hand, if we don't pay them enough attention, they can work their way in secret on us. And we ought to know that as Christians, we are in the crosshairs of the sniper named Satan. He wants to take out as many of the people who are called by the name of Jesus as he possibly can before his day comes due, when he'll be judged and condemned and banished from the presence of God and creation forever. That truth should give us a little bit of pause. In 1 Peter chapter 5, this is the, the verse that's at the title of the midweek refuel this week. Chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Easy to remember, 5 plus 6 is 11. But 1 Peter 5, 6 to 11 is a little segment of scripture that Peter, the fellow who is always ready for battle, encourages us to fight him. He says, your enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, knowing that your other brothers and sisters are enduring the same kind of trials. He also encourages us to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand in that passage so that in due time he can lift us up. And then finally, at the end of that passage, he points to a glorious hope and a future because after a little while, God will raise us up. And you have to ask, what's he raising us up from? He is going to raise us up from the undue influence of the devil and the world and our sinful life. And he is going to glorify us as he is promised to be with us where he is. So we'll be with him where he is. So I've been thinking about uh, a roaring lion. I've, I've never heard one in, in person. I've heard recordings of lions. It's impressive. But I have a feeling that if I were actually in the presence of a lion and I heard that lion's roar, I might get that feeling of, you know, hair standing on end and a, and a trembling fear. Uh, I've been in the presence of predators before, and I, I know what it's like to be fearful of them. But the lion, you know, up at the top of the food chain, as we learn in The Lion King, what's eating you, Simba? Nothing. He's at the top of the food chain. Watch The Lion King if you haven't done it. It's a good joke. But we learn from lions at the top of all of the predators, they can do what they want and, and eat what they want. And Peter compares the devil to a lion. Would you ever go on a safari? You know, I kind of think I'd like to go to Kenya or someplace like that to one of the great... And, and sleep in and, and listen 
to the lions and the leopards and all of those predators doing their work at night. Maybe that would give me a better idea of what the spiritual reality we all face would be like. I understand that if you go on one of these safaris, especially the luxurious ones, they, they will set up tents for you and cook meals for you and all of that, but the, they put an electric fence around the tents in which you're camping so that literally the lions could come right up within feet of where you're sleeping and, and be hunting for you. But the electric fence is supposed to keep them away. Would you, would you do that with me? I think probably many of you are saying no, <laughs> no way. And there's probably some wisdom in that. If we knew what the devil was capable of doing, the way that he can distort our reality so that we believe his lies, the way that he could oppose us and oppress us so that our hope in Christ fades and falters and wanes. If we knew that, maybe we'd be apt to make sure that the electric fence around our world had, had some current flowing through it. Spiritual warfare is mostly the power of Jesus at work. Forgiveness is spiritual warfare. Building up faith is spiritual warfare. Having hope of a certain future is spiritual warfare. All of these things are given to us by the Holy Spirit. Imagine it like that fencing system around the tent. He is the one that provides that protection for us. But he's asking you to turn it on. And that's where your spiritual disciplines come into spiritual warfare. It does us no good to have a Bible if it remains closed and sitting on our ending. It does us no good to have a gift to bear if we're not getting down on our knees and asking the Lord for blessings that are beyond our comprehension, what He would want to give us. It does us absolutely no good to serve people if we're serving them in the name of Jesus. Absolutely no good to sing praise to God unless we are singing praise with all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. The spiritual disciplines that we can follow avail ourselves of the gifts that God Himself provides. That's why our midweek refuel, our time focus on spiritual warfare is going to provide for us. It's going to be a focus on what our Lord has provided for us. And how we can take those things and put them to use within our own lives. So tonight's tool is recognition. That you would understand that you are still on the spiritual battlefield and will be on that spiritual battlefield for the rest of your life. There will never, ever be a time where the devil lets up. Another time when he says, ah, I don't have to bother them any further. Well, maybe if you were already safe in his grasp, he might not be bothering you so much. So if your life has difficulty, thank God for it. Because it's an opportunity for you to exercise spiritual warfare against the one who would capitalize on that difficulty and turn you away from God. If life is plagued with doubts, thank God for the doubts and press in further toward him, into his word to get those doubts resolved. Don't let them sit there and erode your faith like an acid so that finally you say, I don't know what I believe. Lent is a really wonderful time to focus on what God has provided and continues to provide for us because he loves us and wants us to protect us from the world, our sins, the devil, 
so that we would be safe in his keeping. So awareness of the circumstances that are around you, awareness that the devil is still prowling around like a roaring lion, is the first step in being able to avail yourself of the protections that God has set up and will gladly keep around you until the day that you get to see him face to face. I'm looking forward to that day because on that day, we all will get to see the downfall of the roaring lion, the one who wants to devour us. But for now, our call is to resist him, to stand firm in faith, to not give him any kind of hold, recognize his works, and turn away from him, recognize the work of the Lord. And we thank you for the glimpse of spring that we had this day. We thank you that we have a glimpse of the ultimate victory that you have won for us on the cross by the empty tomb over sin and death and the power of the devil. We remember the hope for all the saints that has been made into him. And when the strife is fierce, the warfare long, seals on the ear, the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave again, and arms are strong. God grant that to us. Grant us a glimpse of the victory that you have won, and a confidence in your protection today, so that we may resist the devil and stand firm in the faith knowing that others have endured these same kinds of trials and that they have been lifted up. We look forward, O oh Lord, to the victory of life over death. But now, O oh Lord, give us the victory against the assaults, the temptations, and the work of the devil who seeks to turn us away from you. Stand in between us, O oh Lord, and guard us. Until the day we see his face. We pray all of these things, thankful for your victory that is also ours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for taking some time with me here this evening. I'm looking forward to the next several weeks where we can look at different aspects of spiritual affairs. I'm praying for you as you have to face with Jesus, thanks like be God your own temptations and your own distractions. I have mine, you have yours, but God knows all of them. Thanks be to God that despite all of these things, his love for us never ends. It's in that confidence that I bid you farewell and look forward to seeing you again. Until next time, good night.